Hello everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking about skip vias, what they are, how to use them in an HDI PCB, and what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of this type of via. Now, we've talked about HDI PCBs in some other videos. I've talked a little bit about fan outs and blind and buried vias, but one thing we haven't talked about is skip vias. So let's go ahead and hop into Altium Designer. I'm gonna show you how to set these up in Altium Designer, and then we're gonna look at what uh, some of the routing advantages are around skip vias, and we'll even look at some of the manufacturing requirements as well. Let's go ahead and get started. So to see how to use skip vias, we're going to take a look at an example in Altium Designer. I think the first place to start learning about skip vias is to look at a PCB stack up with blind and buried vias in it. And then we can learn about how they're used and what the structure is and where they appear in standardized HDI stack ups. So here on screen in Altium Designer, I have just a single BGA component that we're going to use to demonstrate fan out routing with skip vias. And that'll show us some of the advantages and disadvantages. If we just do a quick measurement, this is a 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA. We're going to use this with skip vias. So first let's dig into the stack up. Now if I jump into the stack up, you can see here that we have a type 2 HDI stack up. Now HDI stack ups are standardized. You can of course build a non-standard HDI stack up. It might take some extra processing steps and of course you want to collaborate with your fabrication house, but this is one of the standardized HDI stack ups. So this is a type 2. Where do skip vias appear in this? Well skip vias appear in a type one HDI stack up. So if I just add in a new via here and I set the landing layer to layer three, you can see here that I have a blind via from layer one to layer three. Technically, this is not a skip via. If I just make this a micro via, you will now see here at the top of this column that it changed from blind to skip V or skip via. So a skip via is technically just a micro via that skips a layer. So it goes from layer one down to layer three, and it doesn't connect on layer two. Generally, we wanna have a symmetric stack up, so I would set this to go from layer six to layer four, also make it a micro via, and now we also have a skip via going from layer six to layer four. Now, if I were to just delete this micro via pair and then delete this buried via, we would now have what we call a type one HDI stack up. And I could, of course, mirror this down delete this one to make it a little more compact. And now we have our layer pairs with blind vias and skip vias. So this is basically what a skip via is. It just skips from the surface layer to an internal layer, and then you don't have a connection on layer two. So you basically have two routing options available if you were starting on the surface layer and then you wanted to use a blind via to get to an internal layer. You can either go directly from layer one to layer two or from layer one to layer three. What if I needed to go from layer three to layer two? I would have to use this through hole via. Now, if we just go back for a moment, undo some of this and take away these skip vias and just compare, you can see here that with the type two HDI PCB, I can go directly from one to two, and then I can go directly between two and three. So in order to get from one to three, I would then have to do what with these? I would have to either stagger or stack these micro vias. So those are some of the trade-offs here. With skip vias, you have a direct connection between layer one and layer three, whereas with the micro vias, you get a little more flexibility, but you have to stack or stagger them in order to make those two layer transitions. So let's jump back into the PCB layout. We can see how to do a fan out and then some of the advantages and disadvantages with routing using skip vias. So now I'm back in the PCB layout, and what I did just very quickly over here is I just placed three of these vias so we can see what they look like internally uh, inside the PCB. So first, of course, we have our micro via. You can see here that it lands on layer two. And here we have our skip via. Now, when you look at the internal structure of the skip via, of course, you see a pad here on layer one. If I go to layer three, you also see the pad. Here, you see that the pad doesn't exist on layer two, which is exactly what we want. So you don't have to go in and manually remove the pad from this via when you wanna define a skip via. All you have to do in Altium is just define a skip via here in the stack up. And then when you place it in the PCB, it's going to automatically remove that pad. What about routing? Let's go ahead and place some of these vias here on some of these pads. And then we can see some of the advantages here of using skip vias for routing. So here I'm just placing some of the blind vias 
going to go back over here, grab the skip via. I'll place a couple of these skip vias. And then we can go through and do some routing out of this BGA. Now I could use the auto fan out tool. I'm just trying to speed things up so that we can just kind of show an example here with skip via routing. So here on the top layer, of course, we would just route straight out from these pads on the BGA. And we would just do this all the way out. And of course, if you use an auto fan out tool, it'll automatically place some of these traces. Now, depending on the width of your traces that you're allowed to use, as well as your clearances, you could route these on the top layers. Because these are all the same net, of course, you can see that it's not enforcing any clearance rules. But here on the inner layer, typically what we would do is this is where we would start routing our traces coming out of our blind vias so that we can then reach layer two. Now our skip vias, we would start routing on layer three over here. Now I'm routing out my skip vias. This is really important because once I get out of the fan out region and you can see where my trace kind of necks out to illustrate that I'm out of the fan out region, how do I make that layer change? Well, the only way I can make that layer change is with another through hole via in order to get up to the very top. So I have to get that through hole via in order to get up to a different layer that's not part of my skip via transition. So here you can see I'm back up to my top layer. And then of course I could continue routing up here on my top layer if I want to. What if I'm up on my top layer and I need to get to layer two? Well, thankfully I have a blind via for that. Or if I need to get to layer three, I just hit star again and I can go directly to layer three. You have a little bit of an advantage here in terms of manufacturing, but you have a little bit less flexibility in routing. So let's take a look at the routing first. With the routing, the only way I can get from layer three back up to layer two or to any of these other layers is I have to use this through hole via. And depending on how dense your routing is, this might interfere with routing area on layer four or layer three or layer five or whatever. It could interfere with the routing by taking up some of that space. But you do have a manufacturing advantage. And this is one of the reasons that manufacturers tend to like skip vias instead of blind and buried via stacks. If we just take a look at this stack up here, we can see how they're gonna fabricate it. If I were to send this in to a fabrication house, what they're gonna do is first they're going to build this stack of two layers, and only one of these layers requires a drilling and plating step. And that's my outer layer with this microvia. So this microvia is going to get drilled and plated. It's gonna get bonded onto this stack up. And then after it's being bonded, then it can be drilled and plated with skip vias. So the skip via essentially eliminates a step that would have been required if we were to then instead place a buried via from layer two to layer three. The other reason that skip vias might be preferable to blind and buried via stacks is of course, if you stack those blind and buried vias, the fabrication house might have to do some quality control work to ensure that that stack is reliable and has high yield. So blind and buried via stacks can have a reliability problem. I've discussed this in some other videos. And what can sometimes happen is right here at this interface where the blind via landing pad connects to the top of the buried via, the two can separate. And that can happen during reflow. And in general, it can happen during repeated thermal cycling. So when you have a skip via like this, that skip via eliminates that potential reliability problem. So even though manufacturers might prefer skip vias over blind and buried via stacks, there are still some limits you have to adhere to if you are going to select skip vias for routing. Just to illustrate that, let's take a look at an example here. With manufacturing skip vias, the main requirement is the same requirement that we would have if we were manufacturing blind vias and buried vias. And that is that we have to maintain a small aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio, which I've abbreviated AR, is just the ratio of the via length to the via hole diameter. And ideally for blind vias, buried vias, skip vias, we would like it if the aspect ratio is less than one. Now, again, this is something where you're gonna to have to contact your fabrication house, especially if you're doing skip vias. The limit for skip vias could be different than it is for blind and buried vias. Regardless, we would like to have a small aspect ratio. So that's actually totally different than what we have for through hole vias, because with through hole vias, we can actually have very large aspect ratios. Aspect ratio could be, for example, 10. So let's say we had a 62 mil board and we were putting a through hole through it and we had a six mil drill diameter for that through hole. Well, that one's gonna have an aspect ratio of about 10. 
kind of total opposites when it comes to selecting the dimensions for these different types of vias. But for a skip via, blind and buried via, we would like to have these smaller aspect ratios. So let's just suppose that we have two outer layers on our board and let's use our stack up over here just as an example to calculate some of the limits of what we can do with skip vias and then blind and buried vias. So let's just suppose for a moment that we have these two thicknesses for our outer layers, right? Two mil and three mil. And let's go ahead and use those in this calculation. So we have a two mil outer layer and then a three mil inner layer. And we wanna make sure that we size these vias appropriately so that we maintain this limit on the aspect ratio. So for the blind vias, we wanna have an aspect ratio of ideally less than one. That's gonna require that our width have a value greater than two mils. Mechanically drilled or laser drilled is gonna be able to hit this limit, no problem. What about our skip via? Well, our skip via is going to have to go through not just a 2 mil dielectric, but also a 3 mil dielectric. So total value is 5 mil. So for the skip via, the width is going to have to be greater than 5 mil. You may need to oversize your skip vias a little bit based on the allowed aspect ratio value and the thicknesses of the laminates that you're using in your HDI stackup. If these thicknesses get too large, then it might force you to increase the size of your skip via. And if that's the case, at some point, your skip via might be so large that you actually can't fit it underneath one of these BGAs or in between the pads on these BGAs. Keep that in mind when selecting whether to use skip vias or blind and buried vias. That aspect ratio is a really important determinant of reliability and manufacturability. And yet again, this is one of those things where you are going to have to contact your manufacturing house for their limits. Now let's take a look at a manufacturer's website to see what they say about skip vias. So if I just jump over here, you will see that I have rocketpcb.com pulled up. This is not an official endorsement of Rocket PCB. This is just an example of what they say about this. Of course, you will want to contact your own fabrication house to get more information on skip vias. Now here, if you start scrolling down, you'll see that they talk about the aspect ratio. And if I just do a quick control F here, you will see that they have this little sentence here where they say skip vias on multi-layer PCBs may have a higher aspect ratio or length to width ratio. And they require electroplating solutions with higher surface tension and lower viscosity. They're basically telling you that you could have a higher limit on your aspect ratio than this. So you may not need to meet this condition that we derived for this example with our stack up in that demo board. So keep that in mind. Again, contact your fabrication house, make sure you get their aspect ratio limits, and that way you will be able to fabricate skip vias that have maximal reliability for your board. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I hope this gives you the information that you need to know in order to properly use and manufacture skip vias. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to call your HDI fabricator, folks.